I hope you had a wonderful Resurrection Weekend. Uh, this series is something close to my heart. It's missions, being mission-minded. Uh, we have a good month lined up. The specific thought about being mission-minded, I want to bring some clarity to this. For most of the people that I grew up around with, that I know, that I talk to, uh, we kind of had a church culture in which missions was defined as the missionary going out to another country and leaving their homeland and going and serving in another country. My wife and I had the privilege to serve uh, awesome congregations in Estonia, in Germany, and in the UK and London. And these, these opportunities to serve were just so powerful for us. They taught us so much. And so while I do want to bring about an understanding into the clarity of missions, I also want to bring about an understanding that a mission is not necessarily an international endeavor. This means that it is defined outside of the parameters of leaving your homeland and going to another country. So when I'm talking about being mission-minded, I want you to understand that I'm speaking to you where you're sitting you where you are, not necessarily going to another country. Now this may be the case for some people. Some of us may go to another country. We may move from our homeland and go serve in another country. My wife and I, like I said, we had an awesome opportunity to do that. And we loved every single minute of it. We learned so much. The Holy Spirit spoke to us, taught us a lot about who we are as Christians, as Americans and the mindsets we hold. And in looking at all of this stuff now, I do wanna give you the thought of being mission-minded is about you where you are. Let me read some stats out for you. This is from the Pew Forum Research Center, and it says this, uh, in 2010, 50,980,000. I'm gonna read these numbers for you first, then I'll explain what they are. In 2020, 62 million. In 2030, 75 million. In 2040, 89 million. In 2050, 100 million. These are the numbers of what is the projected growth pattern for the unaffiliated or irreligious persons in the USA. Just the USA. We're looking at 50 million people from the year 2010 to the year 2050 will say that they are not affiliated in any way with any religion. They are irreligious. So if we just take that and we look at who the church is reaching within the United States of America, are we reaching, you know, let's just take 2020 for example, 62 million people. Have 62 million people who have never set foot in a church, have they been reached by the church? That's the question. That's the mission mind that I want you to have today. In Europe, 2010, uh, 139 million, 2020, 148 million, 2030, 154 million, and 2040, 159 million, and 2050, 162 million. And again, these are the unaffiliated uh, people who have no religious base or belief or they don't attend church, they don't do anything in any religion. So during the next four decades, and this is a direct quote from the Pew Forum Research Center, during the next four decades, Islam will grow faster than any other major world religion. So this is an interesting thing that we as Christians, that we can look at and have a very in-depth clarity of our mission to share the gospel. If at this rate of growth of non-believers, we can understand that in our Christian walk, we need to share the gospel. JoshuaProject.org, which is another organization, they, they say this, that there are currently 7,432 unreached people groups globally. 7,432 unreached people groups globally. So this means, not this is not a number of people. These are the groups of people. So there are 7,000 over 7,000 unreached people groups globally. So when we take that into context of what we do as a church, as a ministry, and sharing the gospel, and making disciples, and baptizing, and teaching, and in all these things that we do, what is our frame of mind in why we do it? What if I told you that it is a factual statement that can be backed with research that there would be more non-Christians next year and the years to follow? 
there would be more non-Christians. You know, there's a bunch of stats coming out about millennials leaving the church and not coming back, about church growth actually declining. Church membership is at an all-time low than it's ever been in the history of that since they started taking stats. And so when we look at these things and we just add it all up, how would or could you respond to this need? And I'm specifically speaking about just the USA right now. You know, we, we saw the needs in Europe. There are still needs in Europe. There is still a huge necessity for missionaries, for, for global outreach, for mission teams, for those that have a calling, for those that have a desire, for, for the person that prays daily for the country that God put in their heart and says, I want to go minister in that country. There is a need for those people. There is a need for them. And, and I, you know, I love the countries that we served in and we pray for them daily. We pray for the people that we worked with daily. But I will tell you this, we need people who are mission minded here in in the United States of America. In June of 1910, uh, the 1910 World Missionary Conference took place. Uh, it was called also the Edinburgh Missionary Conference. It was held between the 14th and the 23rd of June in 1910. And they came out with these, these eight things that they presented that said, we need to do these things as Christians. And it was all these churches and church groups coming together saying, let's put this effort to do this together. There were eight commissions given at this conference, and it was churches coming together to say, let's do these things. And this was in the year 1910. The first one was carrying the gospel to all the non-Christian world. The, the second one was the church in the mission field. And these were the commissions talking about what they need to do to, to establish these things. Education in relation to the Christianization of national life. Missionary message in relation to the non-Christian world. The preparation of missionaries. The home base of missions. Uh, missions and governments. Cooperation and the promotion of unity. And this was done in 1910. And what we look back and we see is that modern missions was the birth of these groups coming together saying, let's do this. Let's do this together. And the reality is that if we're going to accomplish a goal, a unified mission, there has to be unity. The unity comes from our centeredness on Christ, on who he is. Now, we know that the original mission-minded person is nothing new. God is the original missionary. God is the one who thought of missions, who thought of reaching out. In John 3.16, we know that God sent his son to us. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus gave us the great commission. Matthew 28, 18 through 19, it says this, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus commissioned us to make disciples, baptize people, and teach them. So when we talk about a mission-minded person, we're talking about the person that says the Great Commission is the mission. The mission-minded person that says we are called to make disciples, to baptize people, and to teach them. And you can do that here in the USA. You can do it in Europe, in Asia, in South America, uh, all across North America. There is need. And the reality of sharing the gospel, being mission-minded, is it's a call for all of us as Christians. All of us that serve Jesus must be mission-minded because it is Jesus himself who gave us the commission, the mission. This is what he gave us to do. Being mission-minded means to live intentionally to fulfill the mission given to us. Being mission-minded means to live intentionally to fulfill the mission given to us. Now, there are different aspects of that. Some of us, we're called to preach the gospel. We're called, we're preachers, we're evangelists. We, we share the gospel in the context to non-believers and, and just share it with them. We're just good at that. Others, we're good at other things. There's administrative gifts. There's, there's business people. There's the business mind who says, I want to do this to help missionaries in this. I've met people who said, I want to help you because I'm good at this here, but I know that that's your calling there and I want to help you. So I know that 
Not all of us are going to be doing the same thing, but the mission minded person lives intentionally to fulfill the mission given to us, meaning they're part of it somehow. There's something that you do intentionally to give, to be part of the mission. Although some might say we have never seen persecution like our current time. Some might say that the church is being attacked like no time in the other. Uh, it has never been easier to share the gospel. We have never had a time when we, we had just access to all these free platforms. We can get up and post something and reach a million people on our choice of platform. There is a place here that we have never been as the church, and we have this opportunity that is huge. It's massive. Uh, I want to tell you a story about a guy named Jack Chick. He was fresh out of the army in 1948. It says that he was a young, chain-smoking, uh, uh, cussing cartoonist. He was a hard swearing man and his name was Jack Chick and he became a Christian after hearing the gospel through the radio. He was listening to the radio and he heard a radio message on his honeymoon. He got married, went on a honeymoon and on the radio came this message of the gospel and he heard it and, and it spoke to him and it changed him. And now he wanted to tell the world about it, but he didn't know quite how. So he really began to think and he knew he couldn't tell everyone personally, but he knew that he was good at drawing. And he felt convicted when he saw a group of teens hanging out on a curb. He wanted to share the gospel with them. He, he didn't know how to do it exactly. Uh, he was just burdened. He stopped the car and what he wanted to tell them started rolling through his head. And in just a few minutes, he sat down and wrote out what we call a tract. And this track turned into what is now Chick Tracks. Chick Tracks, they are the little booklets that have the gospel message in just these, these little small booklet format. And they would tell these little stories and the little story would bring about scripture and understanding of who Jesus is and heaven and hell and salvation and, and why we need a savior and why we're sinful and we need to repent and turn to Jesus. And he created this thing through just a creative moment where he said, how can I do this in a different way? Because he said, how can I do this in the way that I know? in the way that I'm good at? What can I use that I'm good at and share the gospel with? And this was the birth of Chick Tracks. And if we can look back at this moment, we can understand two things. Number one, the gospel was shared to him through a, a platform that was media. He heard the gospel through the radio. And in that moment, he wasn't in a church he wasn't at an altar call. He heard the gospel message and understood it to be truth. He knew in his heart, the Holy Spirit spoke to him and revealed to him what this truth was. And he began to share it. And so we know this, that we saw denominations. We saw church groups uh, across the United States. They adopted this, this method of taking these little booklets and giving them to people. They just started handing them out and people would read these and understand the message of salvation, the gospel message. And in turn, they would, you know, obviously join a church where they were baptized, they were discipled and they were taught. Right now, we have access to several online mediums that broadcast different types of media from video to podcast to even just graphics. And we put things out. How do we continue to move forward with the mission of sharing the gospel? We use the tools we have available to us. We use the tools we have available to us. That's a mission-minded person. Remember, mission-minded means to live intentionally to fulfill the mission given to us. And every Christian has been given the great commission. Where is the intentionality in your life? Where are you being intentional in sharing the gospel? Where is that? Begin to look at yourself. Ask yourself, what am I doing? that feeds into the commission that we have been given as Christians. The great commission, the mission-minded person to live intentionally. What am I intentionally doing that's part of the great commission? Where is the intentionality in your life? Second, who are you encouraging in their gifting to share the gospel? Meaning, you might know somebody who is a singer. You might know somebody who is a dancer, an actor, an artist. You know, you might know somebody who has this gift and it's amazing. And you know that if they, they express the gospel through these gifts, that people would know who Jesus is, that they would understand salvation through whatever gifting they have. Where is the encouraging place that you are being intentional to tell others, hey man, do that.
do it. If they come to you and say, hey, I have this idea, you know, what do you think about this? And I could share the gospel by doing this, encourage it. We know that there are, you know, biblical guidelines that we want to stick to, that we, we stay in, in truth. And we, we know that the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us and confirms it. What is intentional in your life? And how are you mission-minded? The mission-minded person has the mindset to accomplish what Jesus commissioned us to do. Again, being mission-minded means to live intentionally to fulfill the mission given to us. Jack Chick was mission-minded just by being who he was. He took what he had and he said, I know the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The Holy Spirit touched me changed my life. I heard the gospel and things changed. And I want to share this with other people. The radio preacher that preached to Jack was also mission minded. It was his mission, the part of the great commission to share the gospel on the radio. We must have a paradigm shift if we are not living our lives to be part of the great commission. What part, what intentional place, what intentional role are you doing to say, I'm going to help. I'm going to be part of the mission. And there's a few ways to do it. And I know we don't talk a lot about money, but one of the ways is you give, you give to the mission. You know, we don't take up offerings uh, through this platform, but you can give uh, at our website, nwlachurch.com. There's a donate button. And what we do is we take that and we put it back into the ministry. We focus on reaching people through this ministry. You can give. You can give to this church. You can give to other churches. You can give to other ministries. You can go to somebody that you know has a gifting and buy them the resource they need or the supplies they need. You can bless somebody, but you can be intentional in what you're doing and saying that I want the gospel of Jesus to spread through the world. I don't want there to be a generation of 50 million people who have never heard the gospel. I don't want people, 50 million people staying outside of a church because no one ever shared the gospel with them. As I said earlier, 7,432 unreached people groups globally. We know this, that just the USA, we need the gospel. We need the message of Jesus, the, the, the unfiltered. The, the true, uh, the, the one that's not watered down, the one that says, hey, we're sinners. We need to repent. We're sinners in need of a savior. And we have to know what sin is. We have to know what that is to turn away from it, to turn to Jesus, to say, Jesus, I need you more than I need this sin. That's the message of the gospel, to share that. Being mission-minded means to live intentionally to fulfill the mission given to us. Mission-minded people are intentional. And so I encourage you today, be intentional in what you do and be part of the Great Commission.